take a look at our tail of the tape for Javier Fortuna and Robert Easter Jr. Clearly the height and the reach squarely in the favor of the IBF lightweight champion of the world. Take a look at the rules, no three knockdown roll, no standing eight cut, you cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight and the fight is official after round number seven. So that is how it all breaks down here from Barclays Center in Brooklyn as we get set for our first of two world title fights here in New York City. It's not a world title fight. <laughs> oh, I stand corrected. But, but they're fighting Easter, in 12 rounds. Yes, they're fighting 12 rounds and Easter is a world I champion. Yes. And now here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York as Premier Boxing Champions presents a big night of action coming your way and it's all brought to you by DeBella Entertainment along with TGB Promotions and Showtime. Sponsored by Casa Noble Tequila, the noble pursuit and Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach. Well, as this world title attraction is sanctioned by the IBF, the president is Daryl Peoples supervisor, Eddie Cotton. Introducing our three judges, scoring the bout from ringside. From Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. From New York, John McKay. And also from New York, Kevin Morgan. And introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge is Ricky Gonzalez. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from La Romana in the Dominican Republic. He weighed in at 136 and one half pounds. His record stands at 33 wins, one loss and one draw and one no contest with 23 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former super featherweight champion of the world, Javier El Avejon Fortuna. And his opponent across the ring is the defending champion, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing purple trunks with white and gold trim, hailing from Toledo, Ohio. He weighed in at already 134 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 20 wins, no losses, 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the undefeated IBF lightweight champion of the world, introducing Robert Easter Jr. Once again, a referee in charge, Ricky Gonzalez, now to give instructions. Ya te di las reglas en el camorino. Protejas de todo el tiempo y obedeces mis órdenes todo el tiempo. Gave you the instructions in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Protect yourselves at all times and obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. It's our co-main event. Robert Easter Jr. embraces with his father, Robert Easter Sr., who's his head trainer. They embrace, they have been together since day one. Javier Fortuna now fighting here in the lightweight division and wants to make an impact. As Easter conventional, Fortuna is the South Palm, where the purple and black is Easter, where the black and gold is Fortuna. Ray Flores, Brian Adams, ringside here at Barclay Center. Now this should be an easy fight stylistically, where Javier Fortuna is reaching and lunging for shots, and Easter is stand, laying on, a back, on his back foot, counter punching. But Easter is going to be aggressive to take the fight to the shorter man, which is going to make it a little bit more entertaining. For us. Well, Easter already starting off extremely aggressive in the first 40 seconds. Because Easter wants to knockout for Tuna, so he's going to be aggressive. Easter measuring for Tuna with his jab. 
He's doing the right thing in terms of stepping forward, working the jab, fighting tall. That is an impressive penalty for in many aspects. Yeah, I mean, I, I can relate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was 130, yeah, I was 132 in amateurs, won the Nationals a couple of times, Golden Gloves four times. Because I use my height to my advantage. It was five, you know, ten and a half, and most of the guys are four, five, six, five, seven. Well, for Easter, he's had his last fight was a his second title defense against Dennis Shapikov. That was an easy fight for him in Toledo, Ohio's hometown. Prior to that, it was a one-sided whitewashing of Lewis Cruz, and he won the world title at the time it was vacant with a split decision victory over Richard Comey. See, I think Robert Easter stop, 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 stop. You only want that should be a little okay? more aggressive in a higher output of punches because he's given Fontuna the opportunities here to figure him out, get his rhythm, get his timing. And set his feet as well. Correct. And Fortuna is very elusive once he gets going. But he cannot give up too many of the early rounds, otherwise he's going to find himself in a massive hole. Fortuna really hasn't thrown anything of substance here in the first round. And interesting enough is, as we said earlier, this is a non-title fight because Fortuna is overweight. So for Robert Easter, Fortuna took the edge, but gave, kept that edge on Easter, and I'll explain in the next round what I mean, what I mean by that. In five right, moments right, of right. round one, and round one is in the books. You see Adrian Broner, one of the stable mates for Robert Easter Jr. Never one to lack fashion is Adrian Broner, and the fans don't necessarily care too he much. Just, he just sitting back waiting to look for something, all right? So use those good sticks, good sticks down the middle, use that right hand, don't reach with it, all right? Stay sharp with this, stay sharp, bring the bucket, here. Yeah. Stay sharp with it, boom, 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 right like that, okay? It's there all day long, man. He Let's see until I pick up. So, lo que este va a tratar de hacer, tirar a la derecha, bajarse y puede tirar de gancho. Right. Okay. So when he throws a jab, we want you to throw the right hand. Okay. Okay. Dale el título también. Okay. Está muy bien, muy bien. You're, you're doing fine, you're doing fine. There you see the lovely Samantha Kubica here at Barclays Center. Round number two, Robert Easter Jr. and Javier Fortuna. So I started to make a point the last round, in the last round. Robert Easter had that edge, edge going into the fight when they signed for this fight. Stop, 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 stop. And Fortuna started out. And Fortuna hurt him on that. On go Benson. Get that. 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 Admonishing Fortuna for holding behind the head. So but you saw the hand speed by Fortuna. So when Fortuna don't make weight and, and he's no longer defending his title, he loses something. He loses that little edge, that chip on his shoulder. But then when Fortuna start to disrespect them and, and, and have the throat slashing, that gives him back that competitive edge. So the advantage that Fortuna had when he didn't make the weight, he gave it right back to Easter by being stop, stop, disrespectful. Stop, 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 stop. By Fortuna. Nothing wrong with that. Time is being called. What, right. I mean, what I mean by that is this. If I got to be aggressive, I mean, uh, I, I Behind the head. The point's being taken One off point. Because he didn't, he didn't One want point. He One didn't point. Give Behind the head. Without Gonesis, okay? Without Gonesis. Well, you have to give it a warning. Timing. Gonzalez didn't even warn him. So that's why I don't like that point. You got to warn him. And, and right before he took the point up, I was saying, that's a low blow by Robert Easton. That's a, another low blow. This is, that's the end of the fight. Is intensifying between Fortuna and Robert Easter. I don't agree whatsoever by the deduction point. And I was saying, there's nothing wrong with him holding Easter and punching because get a warning, but you're sending a message to Robert Easter that it's going to be a rough fight. But then referee Ricky Gonzalez takes a point off without even warning. 
He certainly was very, he was too quick to deduct a point, and you can, this is going to be one of those rough and tumble affairs that may not be as aesthetically pleasing because of the gamesmanship going on between the two fighters. But it favors Javier Fortuna because now he got Rob Easter just wanting to fight, just wanting to pay him back. Game plan goes out the window. And if the taller man wants to stand there and fight with you, he gives you opportunities to hit him. Well, in this second round, the jab has been relatively absent by Robert Easter Jr. once he got involved in these exchanges. And Fatuna has been the one to land the more telling shots this round. Some body work by Fortuna. He steps inside with the right hook. Because he has, now has Robert Easter committed to just trying to hurt him and not trying to win. Easter using his jab for a quick moment. Break! Go punch him. Gonzalez will separate them, the referee charge. By the moments of the second round, this one's scheduled for 12. Ah! And that's the end of the second round. Crowd on hand here at Barclays Center. Well, first off, you look at the feet. They stand on each other's feet. But Javier Fortuna, he needs to get the edge. Robert Issa is holding his, his left hand. I'm sorry, he was holding his right hand. He was just punching to get space. And re referee Rick Gonzalez, Ricky Gonzalez directs him to the neutral corner. Here's a different look. Now watch. Fortuna needs to get close as a shorter guy. He gets close. Gets inside, throws a couple of shots. Nothing lands by Easter. Fatuna gets back into that danger zone. Easter grabs him. Go. He got a little story. He stays and they took tight because he's trying to count, okay? And Easter also threw a low blow in that process. You heard Robert Easter Sr. say, you got to let him go. You got to let your hands go, but also stay tight. So they want to see Robert Easter Jr. more active here in this third round. But more active, you got to be more descriptive with him. More active for me, what, stay in there and fight? You know, work the jab, give angles, be active that way. Because the taller guy, if you give angles, the shorter guy can only do one thing when he punch, and that's reach and lunge. Looking to keep Fortuna at distance. There's you can see five inch straight right hand and found its mark. Now Easter with some theatrics. He's a little bit looser than what we've seen him in recent memory. Back comes Fortuna. Caught him with the right hook. See now over that one two, Rob Easter should step over. Because once he slide over to the right or left, Fortuna has to turn to him. And as soon as he slide over, throw another one too. Keep the shorter guy off balance by using your offense. Now Robert Easter here in this third round is more of the aggressive, but back comes Fortuna. No, 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 break, break. Fortuna. Leap up, leap up, leap up. Clean break. The referee, Ricky Gonzalez, gets between the two. This is fighting at the pace that Robert Easter Jr. wants. I don't think this flow favors Fortuna. It does not. Fortuna needs to be in there roughing him up, throwing a million punches, forcing him, forcing Easter to work and be uncomfortable. That's going to be a similar event of the main event, game plan-wise, for Lamont Peterson against Errol Spence. He's going to have to be active, aggressive, and try to Put Spence in precarious positions. The same thing with Fortuna against Easter here. So nice an inside uppercut by Easter. With left left up. hand. And he hurt Easter with that left hand. Now Easter goes backwards. He got a clip with the left hand. Yeah, but you notice, look at the legs of Easter now. The first round, he was fighting tall, break, break, straight up. Break. He got bend in his knees. He's fighting at a lower height. He's trying to fight with the shorter guy. 
fight tall, boxing, make the short guy come to your run. But that has been the knock on Robert Easter Jr. that he likes to engage Wait, in go, these close affairs inside fights when I mean, he has these physical attributes that he should be using instead of getting involved no, 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 no. in these close distance no, 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 fights no, no, no. like what we have here against Javier Fortuna. Time. That's the end of the third. Stop, stop bending down. Stay, stay up, okay? You got to stay up. Shoot that jab, and you see him, boom, right there. It's there all day. You got to shoot it, man. Don't reach. Don't jump in there, okay? Don't, do not jump in there, because all he's doing is trying to counter. You got to stay up, Right, keep it right there, boom. You know, so you can use the angles and stuff, all right? Start working and stay sharp. Boom, boom, boom. Don't reach in there with that right hand, though. Well, this is as a round went on. You see, Fortuna, he got his range because the taller guy bent down and came down to his side. His eyes lit up and he, Second just and he landed shot. You see him moving in. The taller guy's not fighting tall. And Fortuna takes advantage of him. Robert Easter Sr. telling his son. I want you to stay up, don't jump in, and look at Fortuna coming out extremely aggressive and, and applying the pressure to Robert Easton Jr. And on four, this one's scheduled for 12. No, no, no. Break, 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 break. Gonzalez will once again step between the two. And if you're Easter, when Fortuna comes in with his head down and wild, he should unleash an uppercut, especially with the leverage that Easter has and the height of it. Yes or no? Yes, obviously, that's the, that, that's the obvious punch. No, don't do it now. Let Easter get into that comfort zone of bending down and not paying. As, a, as the fight go on rounds eight, nine, 10, then you start to make him pay. Because at that point, it'll be a habit, it'll be a habit. It won't be easy for him not to do it that way. So once he gets to a habit of doing it, it's easy to land a punch on him. It's one of those ideologies that you won't see it coming, and those are the worst kind of punches to take. Yes. is just not fighting tall. He should be popping that jab, taking half steps back every time Fatuna steps in. Half steps back and throw right here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When Easter doesn't seem comfortable, in the first round he was, but in the second he changed. Fortuna is the one that is fine to be elusive. He darts in and out. He throws these wild punches. And Easter seems to be thrown off balance. Well, what happened in the second round? Think about that point that he He got mad and he wanted to pay Fortuna back for hitting him. And he started to fight more than fighting posture as opposed to a boxing posture. And he's giving Fontuna more opportunity. Break! Don't go! No punching! Look at that we were both, You and I both repeatedly said last round he's fighting too short. We went back to the corner at the end of the third round. The first thing his dad said was, stop bending break, break, down. Break, break. And look break, break. exactly what we're seeing. He's literally no, bending down break, break. as we mentioned that point. Fortuna reminds me of Someone in terms of his his body movements, like Prince Nassim, in, in some ways, you know, very elusive, unorthodox, awkward, has that kind of similar approach. Combination of uh, Prince Ahmed and the Clown Prince. Yes. The Mexican. Oh, I know, Jorge Pais. Jorge Pais. Yes, that's me. Step back, step back, step back. Combination of good two. Ten seconds to go in the fourth. Now, usually the crowd is going. Usually when they boom, it favors the boxer. But it's not favoring the boxer. I think it's favoring... No, 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 no. They both push each other towards the end of the second, but for Tsuna, might be getting into the head of Robert Easter Jr. And here, once again, the support, one of his teammates is Adrian, the problem Broner. You can see concern on his face. He's not confident. He's not. No, he's not smiling by any stretch. He's absolutely visibly okay. concerned. But he 
wants to go and take care of the bat. Says, well, <laughs> takes a quick selfie and gets right back to his seat. And here is the end of the round. Applebee's, as we saw here between Fortuna and Robert Easter Jr. This is where the crowd started booing. So Easter says, come on, stand here, let's fight. Seconds out! Which favors Javier Fortuna. Easter shouldn't be saying, let's fight. Javier Fortuna, Fortuna should be calling him to fight. Round five scheduled for 12. Robert Easter Jr., the defending champion, not his title's not on the line because Fortuna missed weight. Fortuna wearing the black and the gold. This is Fortuna's first fight here at 135. And, or theoretically, in theory. And now with Fortuna being overweight, he don't have to worry about weight. There's no added pressure. He don't have to worry about trying to win the title. He can just try to win the fight. You don't have to worry about winning the title. You're trying to win the title, believe it or not, is a lot of pressure. Regardless how many fights you have and how long you've been in the game. Some inside work by Robert Easter Jr. He got popped with a straight left hand. Easter is sitting down in his punch, but look at Fortuna has hands down and is willing to invite Easter in. Nice body shot there by Robert Easter. Right, let him go. Top punch it. Top punch it. Certainly a learning process for the 26-year-old out of Toledo. Break, break. Step back, step back, step back, no, step back. And you know what, for Javier Fortuna, he's staying in the pocket. He is not keeping that distance or even trying to get on the inside or swarming Easter. Break, break, it's break. like he tastes the best of what Easter can throw, and he's not respecting his power. Well, Rob Easter has yet to really land anything of importance. Most tall guys, look at all tall guys. Mark Breeden, Tommy Hunter, those tall Mickey guys, they, they need to keep you at the end of their shots to hurt you. Robert Easter is fighting on the inside, so there's no real power because he's not getting any body leverage. And especially here break, in the break, fifth, stop, I'm stop, seeing stop, a lot stop. of arm punches from Robert Easter Jr. He's not sitting down and he's doing this turn punch with your legs from the ground up. And right. Easter, a lot of arm punching that we're seeing displayed from the IBF, like the champion. Break, break. 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 Yeah, there's no, yeah, he's no. not putting his back into the punches. He's not turning. His punches. He just sit there punching. And tall, you need to keep your eyes on the end of your shot. Is it really much here in the fifth to sway the judges? So Easter being the aggressor, at least from our standpoint, the judges will likely give this fifth round to Robert Easter Jr. Now Easter is controlling and winning this round. Stop, stop, stop. I'm not stop, sure stop. if. Fontuna is just trying to set a trap, but it's not working too well if he is. He's still with a tight guard. Final 10 Break. seconds go, of the go. fifth step back, step round. Back. Step back, step back, step back. Between Robert Easter Jr. and Javier Fortuna. Ah. That's the end of the fifth. Here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, Rick Flores, Brian Adams. And let's take, here's. Well, on the inside, Last round, Robert Easton for a double hook, body head, land a flush. You see the elbow come down of Fortuna, and Fortuna just trying to punch defensively to push Robert Easter back. But that was a good round by Easter. But you know, on the inside, back. You know, on the inside, Robert Easter is just too close and allowed a shorter guy. No way a tall guy should be hit on the inside with an uppercut like that. Then Fortuna. Lands a nice little punch there on the hip. And Robisa responds with a punch on the hip and then to the head. Seconds out! A little wrestling match there. Neither guy really getting the edge. There's a nice sneaky rabbit punch by Javier Fortuna. Round six, this one's scheduled for 12. Javier Fortuna, Robert Easter Jr. Easter, the lightweight world championship. His belt not on the line tonight. Because Fortuna missed weight. Fortuna, former super featherweight champion of the world. And Easter coming out more aggressive. We saw in the fourth round it was Fortuna who came out and tried to assert himself. But in the fifth and the sixth, it is Easter who's trying to command the ring. But Easter needs to 
move in behind the jab. Yes, he's being aggressive, but move in behind that jab. Good defense there, because Fatun was walking him into a right hook, but it was blocked by Easton. Break! Stop, stop, stop. If you're Javier Fortuna, wouldn't you be, if you're his trainer, Hector Bermudez, to be more active? Stop waiting in, in these moments of where you're not being so aggressive because he is giving up the round to Robert Easton Jr. Yeah, I thought he gave the last round up, and this round, the same thing. That's why I said if he's trying to set Easter up and draw him into something, it's not working. You need to get back to roughing Easter up and making Easter get emotional. Because when Easter got emotional and just trying to knock him out, he had success in counter -country. Just over the midway point of the sixth round. Break, break! Clutching and grabbing his Fortuna. And Easter complaining about rapid punching behind the head. It's an uppercut that missed by Fortuna. Easter, not much is going on. The right for this because with the first three rounds was the unexpected, exciting type action. Anything can happen the way both guys were roughing each other up. Now it's a more settled, ugly fight, so to say. Step back, step back. The same team as Errol Spence Jr. Awesome mark. Oh, oh, big shot there by Fortuna. A straight left that shook up Robert Easter Jr. And oh my goodness, he wobbled him. Well, I said he was trying to set him up, but I guess he was. Fortuna goes on the offensive. Hands up. Got to keep them hands up. Come on, give me a deep breath. See, you got to start working off the jab. Keep them hands up on them. Where's that? Close the ground. One. Easton was controlling the action. And he made a mistake. Moving in. Good right hand. Had no defense. Then bring his hands back. Fatuna. Fatuna. A veteran. Made him pay. You see it again. He throw the right hand and bring it back low. Javier Fatuna capitalized off it to the left, followed up with a right hook. Knew he had him hurt. Move forward to attack. Second There's up. a different angle. What? He lands a nice right hand, but he doesn't bring it back. And he Let's gets go. Fuera. Is that enough to sway the judges, Brian, or hold on, hold on, hold on. the body of work as a whole? by Robert Easter Jr. in the sixth. Granted, there wasn't much action, but is it enough to give Fortuna the round? I gave it to Fortuna. Again, it was one of those rounds, and I commented that was a settled, ugly fight. It was one of those rounds where nothing was happening. Easter was controlling it, but nothing was happening. And that punch signified the round for me. Round number seven, this one's scheduled for 12. Robert Easter Jr. Break, break. Looking to remain undefeated. He is 20 and 0. Compared to that of Javier Fortuna, who's 33, 1 and 1. His only loss is Sosa in China, where he relinquished his featherweight crown. Now, this may sound crazy, but if I was in Fortuna's corner, I'll tell him to lay against the ropes. Because every time he he back up against the ropes, Easter moves forward, goes a straight right hand, and has poor defense behind the right hand. So I'll tell Fontana, lay against the ropes. Roll when you see that right hand coming, and come right back with a straight left hand. You'll catch him every single time. Well, some veteran Robert got it. Pick it up. ability by Fortuna. He got he was clipped 
with a straight right and immediately made Easter pay with that straight left. So he caught the shot well, took it well, and then delivered his own, which Easter didn't take as well as Fortuna did. And just watch, every time Fortuna hits the ropes, Easter will throw that right hand, and watch how he brings it back. He brings it back low. He doesn't bring it back to protect his chin. 70 seconds remaining here in the seventh. Is it fair to say that Easter is a little bit reluctant to pull the trigger here in the fight because typically he is more active than what we are seeing him here tonight? Well, it's obvious to me that he doesn't feel comfortable stalking on time. He needs Javier to come forward. He, he's, not, he's not comfortable. Easter, that is. He needs the guy to attack him. And East is talking more fight forth. And the referee in charge tells them let's talk in more fight. And I concur Ricky Gonzalez has the right mindset. But there, there's a couple of things that I always wonder. I don't agree with it, but I always wonder. Talking is not against the rules. True. So why the referee says stop talking? <laughs> I mean, I don't agree with guys in there talking and arguing. Go, 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 go. That's what they're doing. It's not against the rules. And it's those two guys that are inside the ring putting their you know, everything on the line. And that's the end of the seventh oh, the between Fortuna and Eastern Junior. He's a novato, he's a novato. He's a hablando. Yeah, keep, keep talking, keep talking. Listen. Tiene que, uh, tiene, la, la pelea está bien cerrada. Está cerrada porque te quitaron el punto. The, the no, fight is closed because they deducted a point. The fight is closed because you deducted, they deducted tiene a que point. Bochear. Cuando tú bochees, cuando tú bochees, tienes que... You got to let your hands go. Pin it down. All too, right. Robert. Right. You get a chance to grab your head and stuff. So, yeah. you use your jab and start getting in there and let your hands go. You're not letting them go when you get in there, all right? You got to let them go. You got to let them go. Second up! You got to let them go. The lovely knee at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Round number eight. This one's scheduled for 12. So from both corners, what did you take away from the instructions? Well, I took from Fortano's point that they want him to continue frustrating corner. His dad was certainly frustrated. You have to throw punches. You have to work together. Obviously, they had a game plan going. Easter got emotional. The game plan break, break. Let me go. Go punch it. Go punch it. Go punch it. What he wants to do right now. And that's not listening to him. He's frustrated. He's going to be very active. So, yeah, keep talking. Keep frustrated. Keep At some point, Fortuna should have lost that up or This is around I'm the time you that yes. you went ahead and said that this is when he should throw it. Because now Easter is in that place of just dropping his head. So now it's happening. Step back, step back. And if you're Robert Easter Jr., what does he have to do in order to try to physically impair Javier Fortuna? He need to get off. He needs to get the team to come forward. He got to stop getting bait. So the team is talking to me at home. He need to get off that and stop getting bait. He need the team to come at him so he can let him know. Come on, man. Yeah, every time the team is against the rope, he's a man's right hand. He gets counted. Break, break. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. He needs to get out of the stalking mentality. He'll become the man. No one is in the land of any substantial or significant. Break! Let him go! Help us! Ricky Gonzalez will pull them apart. Under a minute left here in the eighth. Again, the one of the where Easter is controlling most of what's happening. With one or two shots, he can lose the range. 
showcasing his jab, but for, in terms of how he's looking tonight, I think he's, still, he's winning at least from my vantage point. Well, I have a score 66, 66, I have to show that either. I don't think this is doing anything. This isn't doing how he's doing any favors if he wants a bigger fight oh, after five, this one. So, he needs to try to turn things around. Ah! And that's the end of the eighth. Here at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, terrific crowd on hand. As we await the main event, Errol Spence Jr. putting his IBF welterweight crown on the line against Lamont Peterson from Washington, D.C. to begin 2018 and here at Barclays Center, a building that has been home to sensational matchups. Keith Thurman, Sean Porter back in 2016 last year. Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia also the one round destruction by Deontay Wilder and Berman Stavern. In your rhythm, pump the jab. Get in the rhythm and start. Pumping. Second time. All right, keep the drum. Afuera, afuera. Robert needs to see is dead on. Get into a rhythm. Junior has no rhythm. He hasn't really worked the jab or combination. I've never seen so much discord between Robert Easter Jr. and his father because his father's been telling him, fight tall, be aggressive, be active, use your jab. And Easter hasn't really been doing anything. <laughs> Fortuna can catch him, which he's done in the past here. In the Bring fight. on! I don't know, I don't know. And he's talking to him in his ear. And that amazes me, Brian, to have that kind of ability, a guy that has been hurting opponents and to be so comfortable Bring, to be okay, the opponent oh, and having your hands down and doing picky do this and that. I mean, that just... Absolutely yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and you can tell that although Fortuna is the one talking, he's fucking. Easter is not fucking. Let him go. 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 Let him it's been one jab at a time. If, if that. that. Yeah, if that. See right here, a good 10 seconds back and place with punch. Well, also, when it comes to Michael's routine, he boxes it as well. And then he stops midway through, or he just like, he brings it up a little bit, and then he brings it back. When you commit to something, go through it. I mean, obviously, easier said than done, but Easter has the natural ability to do that. And he's just being a little too reluctant and hesitant tonight, which is something I don't think we've seen. He just never appeared to be settled. He may win this fight, but he has never appeared to be settled mentally. And that's the most important part of getting in there, being mentally stable and settled. It's not from a lack of conditioning because he's still in from his body standpoint. He looks in very good shape, but and he shook his head with that left hand. And notice he's able to land that left hand off the ropes. On two and a half. So this is an awkward sequence here. You see, against the ropes, Javier Fortuna, his leg just gave way. No, nothing really. Easter, Easter had his hands on his shoulders and sort of pushed him down, but nothing major. You see Easter here, he's close. 
Man, two shots and he got out. But big right hand, that right, big right hand. I was gonna say, but he didn't follow up with his body the way he should have. You see him slipped a couple of shots there. He's just waiting for Fortuna to punch. He's trying to react more for what Javi is doing as opposed to initiating. Round number two. Afuera, afuera! And from what we were seeing, thanks to our outstanding crew, sure, is that Fortuna was using the distance better than what Easter was. Well, that's why I said last round. He's the one that appears to be more focused. So when you focus, you do little things inside the ring to your advantage. Is it fair to say that Fortuna has a better ring IQ than Easter because he's demonstrated that ring IQ? Well, experience. You know, it's similar to nice body shots, but Easter got to be careful. And Easter barreling into Fortuna and full of fighting at such close distance. But Fortuna have to show the punches. That's why Easter needs to be careful on the inside. His punches are longer and wider. And they take a longer time to get to their target compared to that of what Fortuna is based on the reach advantage being in the favor or Robert Easter Jr. being longer. So Fortuna can land those short compact shots because he has a shorter reach. Just over a minute has elapsed here in the 10th round. As far as Brian Adams brings up, Robert Easter Jr. coming at Fortuna. And Easter is the one who's reaching the shots, which means he's not committed to a, a stiff jab. I haven't seen him see the jab in a minute, he just did right there. He's been laying his hand out there, but he hasn't really been proper with jab. And again, he may win this fight. I just think he let his emotions be the best part in this performance. I have him up in the city for him. Especially from being in a new weight class, that does not look good at all. And he's just not busy enough. Robert Easter's defense. He is the one busy and initiating. Stop, stop. You need two to tango and Fortuna when he wants to engage. But he needs to stay on the body when Habla, mueve, es bomba. Termina con el tres, oíste. Cuando tú, cuando tú amágale, ponte bajito, tira el ocho, pero termina con el tres. Oíste, porque está viendo el ocho, pero él no está viendo el tres. He's looking for the eight, but oíste. I want you to throw the three. Bombas. I want bombs. Talk to him and then throw bombs. Okay. Un poco más. Wild shit. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Keep them hands up and start letting them rip. You got to let them rip when you're close to it. Body shots. Watch that left hand. Man. All right. Okay. Stop. Stop, stop bending down. Stop bending down. What round is it? That has been the theme throughout the entire fight for Robert Easter Sr. telling his son Robert Easter Jr. Stop bending down and let your hands go. For Javier Fortuna. They were asking him, yeah, keep talking, but then throw bombs. We need you to start throwing bombs. Because he's the kiss in that fighting pocket when, when Javier Fortuna stop punching, starts talking. He gets emotional when he tries to fight. He gets to fight. 
เกชอบแล้วมันเกียดเราแล้วมันหยุดว่าอะไรครับยืนแน่โอเคแค่จะมีไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไSeconds of the eleventh round. The champion and Fortuna talking to Robert Easter Jr. as they go back to the corner. And Easter pushes him away. As we take a look back at some of the action here in the eleventh. Well, Fortuna was able to throw those shorter shots and land a shorter shot. The quick one to try to throw the left uppercut hook. Hold behind the head, trying to punch. Last round, touch club. Inside, he tried to get his shorter shot short. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Here, Mike, get the puck here. I mean, I will. I will. Aquí nadie te gana el último asalto, oíste? Oíste? Listen. Aquí nadie te gana el último asalto. You got to win this last round. We remember the second round. Don't go about the touch glove. Touch glove. The touch in point of the other corner by the referee. How big could that be? You know, Moscow scored quite a bit of that. They thought I gave him that round in the second round. But I scored 9-9 for the point of the but in my scorecard, it's irrelevant. I think Eastwood pulled away the, the past five rounds. It's going to come down to what the judges Break. Stop, 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 stop. taste yeah. they would prefer. But do you favor the aggression or do you favor more of the actual puncher in Javier Fortuna? Right, Fortuna was much more, it has been accurate, but there's plenty of problems between the two. And that piece is the one that the force in the fight. And a big straight left that connected by Mike Stewart. Right, right hook too. But Easter with a straight right hand of his own. And now Fortuna's really coming no, up. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Let me go, let me go. Yeah, how's that? At least in the first minute of the 12th. Now, it comes down to, as you always say, championship rounds, conditioning. Both these guys have been keeping a consistent, steady pace, neither one breathing hard. Javier Fortuna has been, you know, mobile, 
occasionally throughout the fight, so I don't see fatigue being a factor in the fight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop, stop, stop. They stop. seem like they can yep. go another go. if we were to go back, a throwback three rounds, and it would be a 15 round fight. They could fight on another three rounds easily. No way. Break! Oh, look at a bump. Four inches short of him. She gave me the throw. A lead left hand and land. Again, another one. And connected right there. Just over a minute to go here in the fight between Javier Fortuna and Robert Easter Jr. Break! Let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go. For Easter looking to remain undefeated. Nice hook by Robert Easter Jr. But he, his body language appears to have some fatigue now. Break, break! Stop, After stop, stop, said, stop, stop, he looks stop. great. Yes. <laughs> now he appears, you know, body language is sliding, he's falling in. Signs of fatigue. In his mind, right, he has a lot of girls next. He's trying to remain upright on his feet. I think he got hurt early in that round, and now he's just trying to get through the line. Stop, 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 stop. stop, 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 stop. You keep your head off. And see, he, cut, he gave you warning then. Where was that to right. Right. in the second? Right. Right. right, he's right. I mean, he could have literally deducted a point there, but he did not. You have to give it out now. I know, listen, I know you're doing this. Next time there's a point. But you don't do that against the top of Consistent in roughing up. Robert Easter Jr. I'll take him to the Robert Easter Jr., I'm sure him and his dad are going to have a lengthy conversation because everything he's got to do with pounds. He got my hand to get on my son. His son went in and out. His son tonight said, I'm doing what I want to do. Win, lose, or draw. I'm not listening. And, and as a fighter, you have stuff. You have days like that, honestly. You have days like that. I remember one fight I had, Buddy McGregor was telling me precisely what to do. I wasn't listening because I wanted to be pretty, so to say, inside the ring. When I went home and watched the tape, everything Buddy was saying, I was telling myself to do while I was watching. <laughs> My scorecard, I think he wins, but if he does not win, he has nobody to blame. He always come on top, 4-1-9, 4-1-9. Here in the second round. Which might be pivotal, round two. You see, look at Fortuna. And you look at his hand, Robert Issa is holding his arm, so he's punching to get free. Yes, a last punch behind his head, but yeah, there's a fight. At the end of the day, there's a fight. Ricky Gonzalez calls Tom. He thought it was excessive, and he took a point off. But now they both embrace, and it was more just gamesmanship than anything. No bad blood whatsoever. And the await, Jimmy Lennon Jr. He has the decision. Just 
still waiting from the Hall of Famer. And here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. Judge at ringside, Glenn Feldman scores about 114 to 113 in favor of Robert Easter Jr. Judge at ringside, John McKay sees it 114 to 113 in favor of Javier Fortuna. And judge of ringside, Kevin Morgan sees it 115 to 112 in favor of the winner and still champion, Robert Easter Jr. Yeah, listen, that's fair. I'm not sure why they're born. I guess I like the spirit of effort yes. of the shorter guy, but you know, I scored at 115, 112. I think that it could was, have been 114, 113, so. It was a deserved victory for Rob Easter Jr. But we go back and look at that deduction in points. Glenn Feldman, 114, 113, Robert Easter Jr. Had the point deduction not happened, it would have been 114, 114, 114. a draw. Yep. So that one point deduction did the turn of fight. Did you assess this fight? Um, it was tough. You know, Javier is a uh, two-time former world champion, and um, he made it tough. You know, he was sitting back trying to hold and uh, counter punt. He really wasn't throwing nothing, you know what I'm saying? And that made it difficult for me to keep chasing this guy around. So the fans are booing, and the reason they're booing is because the point deduction, and that's the difference in the fight, because if he doesn't have that point deduction, the fan, then that would be a reverse decision. The, fan, the fans was booing because I didn't get the knockout, you know? They was expecting me to knock this guy out, and I'm sorry to my, my fans, you know, I couldn't get the knockout, but we got the W, and that, that's all that matters. Was this a tougher fight than you expected? Um, a little bit. I knew he was going to run. And once he felt my power, I knew he was going to run and grab and hold. And that's what he did the whole fight. Now, he did not make the weight, but this was a terrific fight. It was a very hotly contested fight. And you would like to fight Linares or, or Mikey Garcia. But if you can't get those two to fight, would you give him a rematch? Of course, hold on, of course, I like to fight the champions. I like to unify these belts. You know, fights like this, they don't really, they don't really matter. That's why I'm trying to fight the, uh, the champions of this weight class. Going through stuff like this, that's, that, that's not really in my game plan. I'm trying to fight Mikey Garcia and Jorge Linares. And when y'all come, man, go ahead and sign that uh, contract, man. Well, you got Comey Alejandra. You are, that winner is a mandatory for you. Would you take that mandatory, or would you do this again, or where do you want to go man, with this now? Can't, no, can't none of them guys beat me, you know? All they do, like you just seen, you just run the hole and, and grab all fight, you know what I'm saying? Sorry to my fans again, I didn't get the knockout, but we got the W, and that's all that matters. Robert, we appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Thank Let's go across and the I, way And I want to uh, thank you to my uh, management, Al Heyman, and my team, the Bunny team. Y'all know we did it once again. And shout out to 419 Glass City. Toledo is in the building. Thank you, Robert. Felix De Jesus will translate for us. Javier, your feelings on this decision. Háblanos de la decisión de esta pelea. Primeramente, le quiero dar esta pelea con honor a que descanse en paz a Luis King Rosa, que murió la semana pasada. He did this in the memory of Luis King Rosa, rest in peace, that died last week. And the decision, his thoughts on the decision. La decisión sobre la decisión, ¿qué determinaste? Determinada la decisión, el público lo sabe, que dan una bulla si Robert Easter ganó. The public knows what happened. If, uh, they booed because they know that I won. Did you feel as though in the second round that you deserve to have a point deducted by the referee? En el segundo asalto cuando te quitaron ese punto, ¿tú piensas que sí se debió quitar ese punto? No. No, definitely no. Yo quiero saber a él. Él es el campeón. He's the champion. He's the champion. Do you think he should have taken that blow up? Uh, 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 of course, he, he was holding. He was holding. He was holding the, the whole fight. The whole fight he was holding. You, you're the champion. Of course, I'm the champion. I get the belt on, don't I? Okay. Rematch. Would you like a rematch? Quiero una revancha. Si él es hombre que firme contrato ahora de una revancha para la próxima en 35. If he's a man, let's.
contract again at 135. Will you make the weight? What? Va a ser el peso tú. El peso lo hago. Simplemente mi equipo y todo el mundo sabe el tiempo que me dieron para entrenarme para llegar aquí a Estados Unidos para entrenar. Yeah, he will definitely make he will definitely make the weight, uh, Jim. He just knows that the time uh, that he trained is not enough. You knew you, you knew we was fighting before I even knew we was fighting. So how was that an excuse, man? Come on, man. You gotta be professional. You have two time former world champion. Make the weight next time, man. Shout out to you. No, it's not true. All right. Perhaps we'll see it again. Thank you both. Appreciate it.